This is Catherine Alexander with your Word from the Wise. Today I'm talking with Father Abbot Nicholas of Holy Resurrection Romanian Catholic Monastery. You can visit the monks on the web at www.hrmonline.org. The Code of Canons of the Eastern Churches say in Canon 28 that a rite encompasses the liturgical, theological, spiritual, and disciplinary patrimony, culture, and circumstances of history of a distinct people by which its own manner of living the faith is manifested in each church sui iuris. Father Maximus and I were previously discussing the differences between a rite and a church, but I would like to focus now on the difference in theology between the different rites used by the Catholic churches. What does each right having a different theological patrimony mean in this context? Uh, first of all, th the main thing I think we need to know is uh, to, to realize uh, this is a, a good juridical, canonical definition that you quoted from the Eastern Code of Canon Law, but there are other definitions, of course, of what a right means or a ritual church um, that emphasize other aspects rather than law. When we talk about East and West, it can be very tricky because in modern language we talk of the East or the Far East. Uh, it means something different than in ecclesial church categories. In church categories, it basically means what was East and West of the ancient Roman Empire, basically. And so it's it's handy for reasons of history but it's it's not without its problems for example old rome uh, which of course is rome and new rome in constantinople which was the capital of the eastern roman empire the byzantine christianity are only a few hundred miles away they're not very far away um, and the people, the, the people that lived there from ancient times, um, were really ethnically the same people: southern Italians and southern Greeks. All of southern Italy was part of Greco-Mania, the, the, the great Greek empire. And so we can't take these extremes too far. And on the other hand, the Chaldean Church or the Assyrian Church or um, the Syrian Church or even the Coptic Church, uh, they are much more Oriental, or the Malabar Church, much, much, much more different. In some ways, I think you could probably say Latins and Byzantines in some ways are Westerners together, and all the others are really much more Eastern. So those labels have limited, uh, limited relevance. But they, they do paint a picture, at least, um, of ecclesial history. When we talk of theology, we're talking about the study of God, my belief is that theology is very, very important to a ritual church, uh, theology, but theology is not really on the level of dogma. Dogma is a proclaimed and believed truth that is very, very deep, on the very, very deep level of one's personal faith or the faith of a church. Theology, I, I would say, is a little bit more superficial than that. Uh, the same fundamental belief can be expressed theologically in different ways. And that's, of course, exactly what these uh, different ritual churches have done, because historically they have belonged to different parts of the world, different cultures, and each culture has its own emphases and uh, nuances and language, of course, and so it makes sense that the truths of the faith, the fundamental truths of the faith, in these different ritual churches grew up with different language, different literature, different poetry, different theology, different emphases, different world outlooks. Is there a multiplicity of theologies then accepted among the different Catholic churches? I, I would say that, yes. I would say that uh, theologies, 
within reason, can within reason, I, I have to emphasize, um, can, can vary to proclaim the same fundamental truth, yes. How can two churches in communion with, the, with each other have different theologies? I think being in communion with each other means this very, very fundamental agreement that the truths of the faith, the most basic truth, dogma, if you'd like to use that word, have to be non, um, they have to be in agreement, in some, at least not in disagreement. But that doesn't mean they have to be explained in the same way. And they can be explained with, as I say, different nuances, different ways, different colors. And, and, and this is what theologies are. So the same truths can be expressed in, in, uh, by different theologies. Most definitely, the Syrian, the, the Syrian theology in the church, the, the more Greek theology based on Greek philosophy, and later the Latin theology, again, based on the culture of, of, of the West, particularly in the second millennium, the scholasticism and, and so on. Do Eastern and Oriental Catholics have to affirm dogmas proclaimed by Rome? That's a good question. Um, I think definitely they can't disagree. They can't say uh, dogmas that Rome has proclaimed are heretical. But I think they are at liberty to say within our theological um, outlook, our theological tradition, our theological history, these particular ways of expressing that truth are, are sort of foreign to us. We haven't expressed the basic truths that we believe with Roman Catholics, but we haven't expressed it in this way because of historical circumstances. For example, the way uh, Rome, the way the Western Church, the Latin Church has proclaimed and defined, and the language it uses to define the real presence in the Eucharist, is basically, is of course, um, r relative to the Reformation and the Counter-Reformation, a problem that was experienced in the Western Church. And so to address that problem, uh, locally what was used in the West, philosophical categories and so on, uh, were used to, to make that definition in the East. It didn't happen in the same way at the same time. And so the understanding of the real presence, the theological definition of the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, I don't think it's contradictory, but it's, it's different. It's different. That would be much more influenced um, by the, the, the Byzantine world, at least, is much more heavily influenced in its theology by the church councils, but particularly the council against iconoclasts, uh, to, against the iconoclasts. Um, and, and that has a certain colouring throughout Byzantine theology that's very influential, that in the West it wasn't such an issue at that time in that way. And so uh, that is that kind of outlook is, is more foreign to the West, at least has been historically. Do Eastern and Oriental Catholics have to accept all Roman Catholic teachings and theology then? Well, they can't disagree with them, I don't think. They can't say they're heretical. So they have to recognize that they are acceptable. But where they it has to have a lot of relevance to their own particular church outlook or faith outlook or, or theology. Um, no, I, I don't think they do because it's foreign to their way of looking at things, but it's not wrong. They can't ever say, well, no, this, this is uh, heresy, this is, uh, this is wrong. But they can say, I think, it, it does, it, I don't, my outlook on the faith comes from a different historical perspective, different emphases, if you like. To clarify then, may Eastern and Oriental Catholics reject dogmas procra proclaimed by Rome as being outside their theological patrimony? Yes, they can certainly say that. They can't, they can't say that they're outside the faith or not, not, not true or heretical, but they can say, yes, these are not um, the way of our, they're not the, the categories that we have used in our uh, theological patrimony. Yes, they certainly can say that.